Hello and welcome to She the People. Today we have with us Dr. Aparna Hegre, who is a famous urogynecologist. Welcome Aparna to She the People today. It's very nice to be here and among people I've known since some time. So thank you for the support very early in our journey. You believe that uh, no mother or child should die for want of care. Yes. As somebody who has the pulse on the ground, are you seeing, uh, how are you seeing technology, technology uh, skilling programs in healthcare sector growing? It's growing wonderfully because technology allows you to create scalable solutions which are cost effective. You know, I mean, uh, during my residency days in Mumbai, I saw closely how pervasive systemic problems leads to loss of lives of mothers and children, uh, which are completely preventable. And given the scale of India's problems, you know, it is very important that you create scalable solutions that are designed for scale from day one, right? And technology allows you to do that. But we do not only adopt technology. It can't just be a tech-enabled program. We are tech plus touch, right? So we have, in all our programs, we'll have health workers on the ground enrolling women. There is a call center that we have that women can get across to, both the women and the health workers. We work on both sides in, you know, uh, servicing and giving service to women and obviously training health workers. But all of them have access to, you know, uh, you know, um, help through our call center or WhatsApp helpline. Uh, so what happens is that uh, it is a uh, we surround them with, uh, you know, support and help. But the thing is that because we're using technology, we are, we are able to keep a number of touch points to the minimum, the physical touch points. So technology helps you to reach out to women and health workers more often than is possible through traditional models. Uh, you know, what kind of uptake among women have you seen with the technology skills? You'll be very surprised, you know, when we first went into the field and said, oh, we're going to give you voice calls. Uh, you know, women were very skeptical. You know, these are women, in, you know, talking about pockets of rural poor. We started off in urban India, uh, Mumbai. But you, know, you have these pockets of rural poor, very young women, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, married off to men they don't know, you know, uh, divorce, you know, away from their communities, coming to Mumbai, staying in these illegal settlements, and they don't talk to anybody. They have a phone also, they would have spoke, spoken to their husband or mother-in-law. And suddenly they come to government hospitals or, you know, the health worker comes to your house and tells you that you're going to get this service where somebody is going to call you and give you information twice a week. But they get scared, right? Because they've never spoken to, you know, an unknown stranger. But the once the woman heard those voice calls, you know, imagine having an elder sister calling you weekly, right? And nobody else cares about you. There's so much of apathy. Hospitals don't care about you. It's like overcrowded. Somebody shouting at you all the time. And you're like herded like cattle in government hospitals. At home, you know, your husband, you can't talk to, mother-in-law who's so strict. And suddenly this elder sister calls you and gives you information. Suddenly they felt, you know, taken care of. And believe me, uh, the uptake was so immediate and how it spread through the slums, you know, of Mumbai when we started off, you know. And many of the women who first became our beneficiaries then went and enrolled other women. So it became word of mouth and it spread across. Information is empowerment. Uh, so how is this technology learning turning itself into financial independence for women? I would talk about empowerment in multiple ways, right? Um, you know, empowerment is the very beginning of even financial independence of the women, right? Empowerment is agency, developing this whole uh, ability to stand up, you know, to patriarchal modes, family dynamics, right? So I'll give an example, right? It's like uh, when you're not aware of how to take care of your, yourself and your children, uh, you're not able to kind of, you know, oppose your mother-in-law or your husband, right? So when this, info, uh, when this information came in, they developed that agency, right? And when they started developing agency, then it, that empowerment spreads to other aspects of their work, right? So I'm going to give an example of this uh, woman from the slums of, you know, Andheri East in Mumbai, where, uh, you know, she's, uh, she was from a very conservative Hindu family and she stopped wearing a gungat after the, uh, you know, voice calls started coming in. Uh, she sent her daughter to an English medium school because she thought, you know, I thought that you should send to an English medium school. But for her, that was like, you know, one step ahead because she wanted her child to be educated, girl child to be educated. And she started doing, uh, you know, a small scale job on the side and bought her own phone. So, you know, it's like the agency which becomes, you know, which like uh, uh, becomes exponential. So while we are talking about awards and recognition, you know, uh, pretty early on uh, for you, uh, she, the people, uh, uh, Digital Women uh, featured you as the winner of Digital Women's Award. So, you know, uh, what was it to get that kind of recognition uh, early on, one, and uh, how platforms like She the People are breaking new ground with such kind of awards and activities? Uh, you know, firstly, She the People is by women, for women, <laughs> you know, right? And that's a wonderful, wonderful initiative, right? Because it brings attention to your work in ways and gives you a platform, right? 
uh, that you've used your see uh, uh, you know you have kind of the reach right you have the platform the reach uh, when you come and pick up people early on in their journey right see now you know arman is known and our work is getting recognized we've got these partnerships we've got international partnerships but those early days uh, you know because i took tell me i tell you it took me five years to get the first funding you know into arman you know it was very difficult right a homegrown indian scalable ngo so when you know organizations like see the people come in and give you that support pick you up and say okay this is something worthwhile right and uh, bet on you you know it gives the confidence to other people also to bet on you right and they kind of understand that okay this is something to look at right so uh, in why should women apply for uh, this uh, digital women's award sit my example right <laughs> you know i mean um uh, you know the recognition uh, uh, that came in with that you know you interviewed me then also there was a video on you know online i know that it got a lot of viewership uh, you know you promote us right we are always your alumnus right i mean uh, you and it be like we'll be together in this journey right i mean i hoping that i'm speaking to 10 years later right uh, you know talking about where arman has gone and the kind of good work we've done and uh, it is an extremely good uh, you know uh, group of people to be part of and i hope that eventually there is a kind of a network that is there of women right i mean women leaders and a peer group of women leaders is always going to be extremely helpful right because women face so many issues right i mean not just uh, starting the organization running it but also how do you balance work and life right so having that advice from other peers you know who are su as successful as you is going to be very you know helpful to everybody who applies right so it's worthwhile applying take my example <laughs>